Today we're going to be talking about narcissists of the world. And it's a very important topic to talk about because in your healing journey, you need to be able to recognize the traits and things that are associated with narcissism so that you keep those types of people away, especially on your healing journey. You do not want to attract another narcissist in your life. So let's talk about it. Welcome back guys, JT here. Oh, I forgot to do. There we go. I cut my thumb, so I wasn't gonna do it, but I did it anyway, because it's my signature move. <laughs> I hope you're all doing great. Thank you all for being here. I'm so happy to see all the new subscribers. Uh, if you don't know, I am JT, and I have a channel called Authentically Yourself, and I just want everyone to heal and become the best versions of themselves after toxic relationships, after abusive relationships, after any kind of trauma in life, you know, oftentimes we get down on ourselves and we go down the wrong route and we don't go on the healing journey. And when you do make that choice to actually heal and become your authentic self, you open up the gates for a, an abundant life, for all positivity to come into your life. And that's really why I made this channel, is to help as many people get on the right path as possible. Um, so today, we're gonna be talking about Narcissus of the World. And I actually watched a movie today that I'm gonna recommend here shortly, absolutely incredible. And it was in one of my comments, I'm so grateful for all your comments. Um, Oh, the, a woman commented a few days ago about a movie that I should watch and I watched it today and it was like so spot on and I'm going to recommend it to all of you as well. Um, but yeah, I'm so appreciative of all your comments and at the end of this video, I'm going to keep this video short as short as possible today. The last one was crazy long, but um, yeah, at the end of the video, we're going to answer a few comments just so you can see what other people are going through in their lives. and. The majority of the, with the past couple of videos is a lot, of, a lot, a lot of comments about people getting illnesses, sicknesses, uh, autoimmune diseases. I read cancer, MS, schizophrenia, uh, the list goes on, uh, digestive issues, uh, anxiety disorders, PTSD, CPTSD, uh, panic attacks. Uh, there's so many illnesses and sicknesses we get from narcissistic abuse. So I'm, I wanna read some of those comments to you at the end of the video, just so you can see that you are not alone. If you have any of these symptoms or you've gone through any sicknesses or illnesses, you are not alone. It is a very, very common thing. Okay, so let's talk about, the vi let's talk about this video. Narcissist, <laughs> narcissist of the world. I'm a little tired. I just went to the gym and I went kind of, I went kind of hard today. I was there for like three hours. Whew. Okay. It's not about me though. This is about you. So narcissist of the world. What comes to your mind? If you were to think of any movie off the top of your head, what movie, what actor would portray a narcissist or a narcopath or a narcissist sociopath or a so sociopath. The, the first one that comes to my mind is Robert Downey Jr. in Iron Man. That's the first one that comes to my mind. And if we watch, if you've watched any of those Marvel movies, you'll notice that Robert Downey Jr.'s character is extremely egotistical, extremely arrogant, very center of the universe, grandiose mentality. No one else matters but him. And when, when I watch these movies, and I was thinking about this today a lot, you know, whenever he talks, whenever he has dialects with other people, if something isn't going his way, you can see like how he just doesn't want to hear it. And he, it's like almost like he, he listens, but he just, it just goes in one ear and out the other, and he does what he wants to do anyway. And that's where all the conflict, I think, in the third Iron Man comes from is because he doesn't want to listen to Captain America, and he's just like, no, I'm going to do my own thing, and creates all this chaos and all this extra bullshit that didn't even need to happen. And narcissists do this all the time. They have to be the leader. 
Iron Man, he has to be the leader of the Avengers, has to be the number one. Is he the strongest? No, he is not, not, not even close. Um, but still, he has to be the leader, has to be the center of attention. The spotlight has to be on him at all times. And if we think about all these different movies that portray narcissists, and we could go into politics, oh my God, God, like I'm not a big po political person. I really, I hate politics. But if we were to talk in politics, like how many narcissists and sociopaths are in there, it's absolutely disgusting. It's disgusting. And you can let me know in the comments if you want to write uh, a, politi a political person you think is a narcissist or a sociopath and write in the comments, give me who you think is a narcissist in today's society, in movies, in Hollywood, maybe musicians. There's, there's a lot, especially when you get that kind of stardom or stardom at a young age, uh, you become very arrogant. You become very self-centered. Um, so it's, a, it's a definitely a big common trait. But I, I want to do this video so that you guys can start recognizing it. When you start watching movies, start watching how the characters interact with each other. Start noticing the little cues, the little nuances that normally, like when you watch a movie, you get sucked in to the plot and the set and the story and the setting and everything that's going on. You're not thinking like, you know, your brain isn't working like, is this person a narcissist? Is this person an empath? You know, you're, you're not thinking that. But once you go through narcissistic abuse and it's happened to you and now you know more of the signs and you're doing research and you're watching these YouTube videos, now you can see it much more clearly, right? Because you recognize it, it happened firsthand to you. So I challenge you guys, when you're watching movies now, kind of pay attention. Pay attention to the characteristics of the characters and be like, mm, yep, that person's a narcissist or maybe they're not a full narcissist. Maybe they have narcissistic tendencies and you can start to catch on to it. And when you can start recognizing that in movies, in politics, in musicians, in Hollywood, when you can recognize that, you're gonna be able to recognize that in normal people. So when new people come in your life, you're gonna be able to catch on. You're gonna be able to catch on super fast. That was the whole point of this video is that I want you guys to be able to catch the signs early, fast, so you don't get sucked back in. Because a lot of times when the narcissist comes on so charming, so charismatic, so, um, lovey-dovey because in the beginning the love bombing stage right it's all fake you got to see through the mask you got to see through the bullshit in the beginning and that's the trick that's what is very difficult because they're not being their authentic selves they're never going to be them their authentic selves but especially in the beginning when you meet a narcissist they know that you would never give them the time of the day if they skipped the love bombing stage and showed you who they truly were right from the beginning. If a narcissist came up to you and went right to the devalue stage, went, you know, it goes love bombing, devalue, in the devalue you got gaslighting, gray rocking, all these other manipulation tactics. Then they go into breadcrumbing, give you little bits of the love from the love bombing stage to keep you on the hook of the toxic cycle. If they didn't give you that love bombing stage and went, they met you and went right to de devalue and you saw through the mask and got treated like absolute shit in the beginning, you would never stay with them. They have to do the love bombing to get you on the hook. So if we know that, if narcissists have to do that love bombing stage and have to put on this crazy act for us to like them, then you have to be so good at catching those cues under the radar, right? Like. If they were to just devalue, you would you would know right away. You'd be like, no, I don't need you in my life. But they have to like create this false illusion in the beginning to get you. So when you watch these movies and you can start noticing all these little nuances, all these little tactics, notice facial expressions, then you can start seeing through the bullshit a lot easier so that you don't risk getting another narcissist and then you know, being fake for two, three months, and then you're trapped in another trauma bond. That is not what you want. So I highly recommend watch movies, listen or watch interviews with musicians, any of that type of stuff, and start catching on so that you can rewire your brain to know exactly what to look for, exactly how a narcissist moves, exactly how their expressions change. When you start memorizing all that, <clears throat> 
it's gonna be so much easier for you to make sure that no narcissist ever enters your life again. Okay, so let's talk about the movie I watched today. I watched, uh, and uh, I'm so grateful for that comment um, about this movie because it was absolutely eye-opening. And I am gonna highly recommend it to every single person that watches this, this video. It was called Renfield. And it is on Amazon Prime. If you have Amazon, you can watch it for free. Um, it's about uh, Nicolas Cage and I think uh, Timothy Holt, I believe, is the, the second or the main character's name. And uh, Nicolas Cage is Dracula. And Timothy Holt is, or not Timothy Holt, Nicholas Holt is um, his servant. His, like, his, his, uh, his servant that has to serve him for all of time. And, like, it, it is a very gory movie, I will not lie, but it's... It's a comedy, and it, the gore is like very like stupid, like stupid, like they'll like just rip someone's arms off and beat other people with it. Like it's very like comedic gore. Uh, it's not like scary. It's not scary. There's no scary parts in it whatsoever. Um, but it <laughs> from the moment from the first three minutes, it's like talking about narcissism. The whole movie is about, I don't want to give anything away, but like essentially one little scene I'll tell you about, um, Nicholas Holt's character, the servant of Dracula is going to a narcissistic awareness meeting with other people that have been through narcissistic abuse. And they're all talking about codependency and this and that, and, and how he has to work through getting away from Dracula. And the, it, like you hear, you don't hear like the terms, but you hear about codependency and you hear about the manipulation and the power dynamics and everything that goes into narcissism. It's like, like I would love to actually look at the script, like who wrote it, because it's straight like from a narcissistic awareness playbook. Like everything about narcissism is in this movie. So it's absolutely an amazing movie to watch. It's like, it's, you know, it's a good movie. It's not like anything like, whoa, like Titanic or, you know, Saving Private Ryan or some like Oscar winning film, but you know, like, and it is very like gory, um, but like in a comedic sense, I guess, like I said, but I highly recommend you all watch it. It, it really like opened my eyes. It, it, it was like exactly like every I keep cutting myself off, but every single person we've gone through with narcissist awareness, every narcissist is Dracula, essentially. Every single narcissist is Dracula. And what do we all say on YouTube channels, on YouTube awareness channels, that narcissists are energy vampires. Vampires. This is Dracula. Vampire. Like, they're straight out narcissists without... Like, once you watch it, guys, you'll understand because it's so wild. Like, when I saw it today, I was like, oh, my God. Like, this makes so much sense. This, wow, this makes sense. And when you can relate Dracula to your narcissist and see everything that the servant has to do for his master, for Dracula, it's like, wow, you, just, you, you lived through it to an extent. You lived through it with your narcissist. Same exact thing. Right? So absolutely crazy. I highly recommend you watch it. So let's conclude the video there. And now let's read a couple comments and we'll uh, wrap this up and you guys can enjoy the rest of your day. Let's do it. All right, Duchess says fibromyalgia, lung cancer, out of whack hormones, clumsy when I am not normally like that, bumping my head, things fly out of my hands, etc. have been isolating, which helps me. Yeah, wow, that I'm really sorry to hear that. That's that's rough. My mom has fibromyalgia and I know <clears throat> some days she has to lay in bed for 6 to 8 hours cuz the pain is so bad. So, again guys, these narcissists they trigger all these illnesses, all this the hormones, the dopamine, the anxiety, the panic attacks. Like they literally wreak havoc on the human body. They are not of this world. They are demonic. And again, I will do a video on uh, if they're demonic or if they're fallen angels. I have my own opinion. Gone down a few different rabbit holes with it. But they really 
inflict maximum damage on us. Um, Anne said, yes, I had a relationship with one and it's been over about eight months, but recently I found out more of his lies and it's taken its toll on me. I am finding I forget things and I feel uh, a foggy mind and this is not me at all. I keep rewinding his lies in my mind and how he hid the truth and it blows me away. I had surgery and the day after he yelled at me. I find out that he has pretended to have a career that he never had. It's one thing after another. I was feeling great and now I feel exhausted. Well, and I will tell you this, you will get better, I promise you. It, like everything in life, time heals all wounds. It's easier said than done. Like, obviously, it will be painful. You know, when people abuse us mentally, emotionally, it's very hard to, to let it go. And I always say this in all my videos, like, take, it takes a lot of strength to forgive someone, especially when they create illnesses and... <laughs> You know, we have to deal with all of the pain and the narcissist just gets to move on and do it to the next person. It's absolutely sickening and it's, it's, it's hard to hear, but you will get through it. I promise you that. And I'm really grateful for this comment because I have a mini story now I can tell you guys. So Anne had said, I found out that he pretended to have a career that he never had. So <laughs> I told you guys in other videos how my narcissist had two new supplies while she was still with me and she manipulated my brain so much uh, to where I was hanging out with the new one of the new supplies like two to three times a week going out to eat with them. They'd sit in a booth together. I'd sit on the opposite side. She'd be like touching him and like I had no self-respect. Like it was absolutely the worst thing I've ever gone through in my entire life. And a lot of times narcissists sometimes I don't want to say a lot of times. Sometimes they'll end up getting another narcissist. This can be the best thing you could ever hear because when a narcissist gets another narcissist, they, uh, if you did to a narcissist what they did to you, they could not handle that at all. They would never, ever accept any of that kind of mistreatment. And when a narcissist gets another narcissist, you better believe it's going to be a battle to the death. Not in the beginning, not in the beginning, but once they, one of them or both of them figures out that the other is a narcissist, it's game over. And so my story with my narcissist, she ended up getting this uh, older guy, millionaire, of course, finances, buy her anything. And um, <laughs> because I had my throat surgeries, right, he was an anesthesiologist, worked at a hospital. And uh, I just so it happened, I always went to this one hospital near me, but my new GI doctor for stomach uh, was doing the surgery at this other hospital. And he just happened to work at this other hospital. And I'm like, oh my God. And this is, this is about three months after I left my uh, narcissist. And I'm like, I do not want to see this guy. I'm like, absolutely not. I'm like, that was absolutely hell what I got, what I went through. And so I called the hospital. <laughs> I called the hospital. Karma is a bitch. I called the hospital and I'm like, uh, yeah, so I have an upcoming surgery next week. And I, I was just wondering if you could tell me who the anesthesia anesthesiologists are. And uh, the nurse was like, oh, it's so-and-so and so-and-so. And, -so. and um, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't uh, this person. And I, I just said their first name. I was like, Dave. And um, they were they're like, oh, no, we have a Dave whatever. And she said the last name, and it was him. And I was like, oh, and he's not an anesthesiologist? And she was like, no, he's one of our nurses. Boom, bitch. <laughs> Karma. My narcissist, she thought she was getting everything she wanted. All false. This, this guy was a narcissist, complete narcissist. And I told her from day one when she met him, I go, I do not trust him. I'm like, I do not trust him. He has a very strange energy. Like, I just feel like he's like not who he really is. I told her this the first day I ever met him. 
lied about his entire career, not even the job he does. So, yep, she's getting her karma for sure, for sure. And don't ever wish karma on the narc. They're, they are walking karma every single day of their life. Put out positivity into the world. Don't wish upon the narc to get another narc or anything to happen to them. Just, you know, let it go, move on. But I'm telling you guys this because they lie about everything. Narcissists lie about everything. The, if you think, if you're catching the narcissist in small lies, like, look, these are big lies. Like, imagine what you don't really know. You know, th everything is such an illusion with them and they get so wrapped up in it and they'll fight till the death to not tell the truth. I guarantee if I called this this other narcissist out, the, the supply of my narc, I guarantee he'd be like, oh yeah, well, I, I was an anesthesiologist and uh, I had to take a sabbatical because I like broke my ankle and blah, 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 blah. It's bullshit, 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 right? You call them out, oh, they'll have an answer. They'll have an answer ready to go. But that's my point, guys, is like, they're so, you, you can't trust them with anything. Not the small, if they're lying about the small stuff, they're gonna lie about the big stuff as well. So, I hope that video was insightful for you guys. I want to keep it as short as possible. Um, I will be doing another video tomorrow and uploading, and I'm really appreciative of all the comments. As you guys can see, it is a very serious thing that is growing in the world today, and that's why we need to get this out to as many people as possible because so many people don't go on the healing journey, and then they take years, decades, to heal and they ruminate about the narcissist for half a lifetime. You do not want to do that. You need to go on your healing journey now and I say it all the time, isolate yourself. Isolate yourself. It's you're going to find your inner peace in the beginning. No, it's it's going to suck because you're getting no dopamine. Maybe you're sitting in your house, you're trying to figure out what you're doing, you're like trying to read but you can only read half a page because you're used to watching, you know, 4 hours of Netflix before you go to bed, whatever it is. You gotta isolate yourself and find constructive things to do. And yes, that first couple weeks is difficult. But after that, you'll have your own sanctuary. You'll feel more at peace in your isolation. Now when I go out, I'm like, oh, I cannot wait to go home and just be around no one. And as empaths usually, well, I don't wanna say empaths. We can talk about in introverted versus extroverted and the hybrid between the two. Um, I'm a hybrid, but I've been extroverted at points in my life and I've been introverted at points in my life. I'm more introverted now, especially after going through the narcissistic relationship, but I enjoy my peace and quiet now. I used to love going out and you know, conversing with people, but I can only do it for a small amount of time. As an introvert, we get energy from the time we're isolated and alone as an extrovert gets energy from other people when they're around everyone else. They feed off of energy, kind of like an energy vampire. And that's not to say extroverts are bad or anything. I'm not comparing narcissism to an extrovert. But um, as an introvert, we need to refuel, as an empath introvert, you need to refuel and charge your battery, and then you can go out every once in a while, and then you give that energy to other people. You're healing, right? If you're healing if you're an empath plus an introvert. So you end up healing and then you need to recharge your batteries. So for me, I love it. Like I, I'm so grateful I isolated myself because I'm so at peace with myself and I don't have to rely on anyone else's energy, anyone else's opinions, whatever anyone else is doing in the world. I don't give a shit at all. Like I care about people on a level where I have compassion and love for everyone, but like, I don't care about what this person did yesterday and what they had for breakfast for, and like, you know, I don't watch anyone's stories on Instagram or anything like that. Uh, when you isolate yourself, you, you're trying to focus all your energy on you. If you're looking at every single person's story in your life and this and that, you're getting that dopamine still from that and you're comparing your life to other people's lives and, and you're gonna think, even if you don't consciously think it out loud, you're gonna be comparing and be like, oh, that looks so much fun, or they're going out for drinks, oh, they just bought a boat, oh, they just bought a Lamborghini, or whatever it is. You don't want any of that. You need to strip all of that away and be in your own energy and focus all of it on you so that you can heal faster. If you have these little cracks in your bubble, 
you're trying to create this bubble of healing. You have a little crack here in Instagram stories, got some Netflix over here, you got some drink in here, you got all these little cracks. You're allowing the outside world to get into your peace and, and your healing. So it's gonna take longer to heal when you don't fully block everything out. I know it's easier said than done. I know, I've done it, but it is the best thing for you, I promise you. And you'll be so grateful when you do it. And then a month, two months, three months, goes by and you'll feel much more at ease. You're sleeping better. I just read a comment about uh, someone having digestive issues, panic attacks, anxiety. When all of that starts to fade away, you'll feel a hundred times better. But if you don't isolate yourself and you keep having the cracks open and doing and having little temptations here and there, you might have that anxiety, digestive issues, sleep issues for six months, maybe a year. You don't want that. You wanna get rid of all of that pain and suffering as fast as possible. So focus on you, isolate yourself, work on becoming your most authentic self. The only way you're gonna do that is by putting all the energy into you. So go enjoy the day, guys. Get a workout in if you can. Be grateful for everything that you do have and just remember everything happens for you, not to you. All right, guys, enjoy the day and I will talk to you guys tomorrow.